If you received at-home parvo treatment from Austin Pets Alive, that means that your puppy has been diagnosed with parvovirus. Parvo is a highly contagious disease that can be deadly in puppies if not treated properly. APA's at-home parvo treatment program has a high level of success and survival rates if you follow instructions carefully. Please do not give any supplements or any other medications that were not prescribed by Austin Pets Alive. If your puppy is getting worse despite treatment, or if your puppy has not improved at the end of the three-day treatment course, please contact APA for additional advice. You should have received medications from Austin Pets Alive, as well as treatment paperwork. We're going to start first by looking at everything that's included in your Parvo treatment kit. As you watch the video, go through the items in your treatment kit and make sure that you've got everything you need and that you understand what everything is and how to properly store it. We have at-home Parvo medications here that I'm going to walk you through. Um, I'm going to explain these medications to you first and then we'll do a demo on a puppy. Um, the first medication that you're going to see is going to be this big fluid bag. Uh, and this is going to be the fluids that are going to go into the puppy um, in addition to the medications. These fluids are very important. They are a special solution um, of electrolytes um, and uh, the fluid itself, of course, will provide hydration. Uh, you don't want to use anything other than these fluids to your puppy. So if you run out of fluids for, for some reason, um, you don't want to add anything like distilled water, or any other fluids. Um, they are not the same and you'll want to just contact us to get more of these. Um, I'll show you these fluids. So you're going to get this bag and you can see each of these blue marks right here on the side of the bag uh, signify an amount and they are 50 cc's per each blue line. So depending on the size of your dog, our technicians are going to let you know how much uh, to give your dog each treatment. And so you'll know that these blue lines are going to be those measure units. When you first get the fluid bag, it's going to be above the, the one, um, so it'll be about there. And then down from the top of the bag to the one is going to be 100 cc's of fluid. So that will be your first treatment. The fluid bag has a line attached to it, and that's this guy right here. There are two places where it clamps, um, so fluids aren't just uh, leaking out of the bag. And that is going to be these two clamps on this bag. Uh, the fluid line that you get might look a little bit differently. This clamp right here might be blue, um, but they're going to serve the same function. This one will always look the same, and you can see right now, I try to wiggle it back and forth and it doesn't go anywhere. That's because the fluid line is closed, which is preventing the fluids from coming out of the line. You can also use this other clamp right here to click it closed and that will close the line as well. I find it easier to use this wheel lock right here. You can open it, you see if I open it, I can move it around and that allows the fluids to come out. And if I just wheel it back closed, that locks it in place again so that fluids are not leaking out. Um, the other important piece of this is this uh, needle. So this needle, if you twist it, it'll just pull off um, and then it just sits right back in at the seat right there. Um, you do always want to keep um, a needle on this line so that bacteria doesn't come up into the fluid line and then potentially contaminate the fluids themselves. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but you always want to keep a needle on here so that it stays sterile. Um, the last piece of this that is important to note is this bell right here. Um, and this is where how you can tell how quickly the fluids are coming out and how quickly they're flowing. Um, you want to see a steady stream of fluid coming down from the bag through the bell and into the IV line. And because that indicates that the fluids are flowing. Um, you want them to flow as quickly as possible. You don't necessarily want slow fluids. Um, so a steady stream here is going to be uh, what you're looking for. So next we're going to go through the medications themselves. And you will get um, a few different ones. We will go through them. This first one right here is Polyflex. Um, and you can see it is white. Um, this is a medication that you want to keep refrigerated at all times. It is a... Um, antibiotic that is going to help your puppy recover from parvo. This medication is going to be given twice a day um, and I'll show you how to do that. We're going to do that directly into this IV line. Um, so we're only poking the puppy once. But Polyflex, it's going to be this white, um, white fluid. It's an antibiotic and it is given twice a day. 
This next medication is going to be Reglan. Um, Reglan is also twice a day. It is light sensitive, so we have it wrapped up in a paper towel um, at home. You can simply just keep it in a dark place. Um, you can store it in a cabinet. You can store it uh, in the refrigerator. That would be okay. But you just want it out of direct sunlight. This Reglan is an anti-nausea medication. So it's going to help your puppy uh, stop vomiting uh, or help keep them from vomiting excessively. Um, it is a pretty benign medication. You won't notice any stinging or anything like that. Um, and again, it's twice a day, uh, and it is an anti-nausea medication. Um, this other medication is going to be Serenia. Um, this is another anti-nausea, anti-vomiting medication. So we have two of those in this packet. They do work differently, so it's important that the puppy gets both of them. This medication is only once a day, um, so you'll give it uh, usually the first treatment of the day and then again the next morning. It is best to keep this medication refrigerated. It can sting a little bit when you give it um, and when it's cold it, it helps reduce that stinging. Um, it shouldn't be anything too dramatic. It doesn't, uh, it's not overly painful and it, it's just short-lived, um, but you might notice your puppy flinching just a bit when you give it. This other, the last medication is going to be Batril. Um, and this is uh, the main antibiotic that we use to treat parvo. It is once a day as well. Um, so again, we're going to give this one uh, the first treatment of the day and then again the following morning. There's three syringes in here. You do want to give this medication um, usually towards the end of the treatment because we want it to go into a nice bubble of fluids. It can cause abscesses under the skin. Um, if it's given directly um, or with, without enough fluids. And so we want to make sure that um, we're giving this medication when the fluids have, um, are running its course, and we'll show you what that looks like here in just a minute. We also have some needles. You'll get extra needles that you'll use. Um, every time you do a treatment, you want to change this needle because they do become dull and contaminated. And so... What I would recommend is leave the dirty needle on, the needle that you just used, cap it again, um, it has a cap right here. You wanna keep that cap on and then store the fluids like this until your next treatment. And then when you're ready to do the, the next treatment, you'll want to open your needle and then just put the new one on and then you're ready to go for your next treatment. Um, and then this cap just comes on and off so make sure you don't poke yourself, and that's um, you'll have uh, extra needles like, that way. You'll also, you might have a feeding syringe. Um, if the clinic recommends that you force feed your puppy, and we will review this in just a little bit as well. Now that you know what all is included in your treatment kit, let's review when to give your treatments. As mentioned in the video, some of the medications are once a day, and some are twice a day or every 12 hours. The big bag of electrolyte fluids, you are going to give a dose of that with every treatment, and that will happen twice a day or every 12 hours. Typically, that means you'll give one treatment in the morning and then one treatment in the evening and try to space them out 12 hours apart if possible. With those fluids, you will be giving some of the medications at the same time. The Polyflex injection and the Reglan injection are both twice a day, meaning you will give Polyflex and Reglan with the electrolyte fluids every 12 hours. The Batril and Serenia medications are only once a day, so you will only give those with the electrolyte fluid treatment in the morning. So, in the morning, you can see that you'll be giving all four medications with the fluids each day, but in the evening, you'll only be giving two medications, Polyflex and Reglan, with the fluids. All small syringes of medication will be given in the fluid line. None of them will be injected directly into the puppy. Only the bag of electrolyte fluids will be injected directly into the puppy. The next part of the video will show treating your puppy. The puppy we're treating in the video has already received several treatments and is active and very wiggly. Your puppy may look more lethargic than the puppy in the video, especially at the beginning of treatment, and that is normal. So we're going to do our second parvo treatment on this little puppy right here. I do recommend that you use a friend or a family member to help you with this because we need these fluid bags to be higher than the puppy so that gravity works for us. Um, and that can be hard to do by yourself, 
Um, but you can also use like a, a nail in the wall um, or some sort of clip on the wall if you don't have a second person to help you so that these fluids are, are above the puppy and flowing as quickly as they can be. Um, I'm going to use a friend here who is going to hold these fluids for me and hold them higher than the puppy. Again, because we want the fluids, we're going to be looking at this bell right here, and we want the fluids to be flowing in a stream um, so that they're going into the puppy as quickly as possible. We don't need to um, we don't need to go slow for any reason or uh, be worried that they're going to go too fast into the puppy. So I'm starting my treatment. I'm going to get a clean needle. So it's always a good uh, habit to just assume that this, ner the, this needle on the fluid line is dirty. And we want to know that it's a clean needle because, um, again, they can dull and they can, uh, we don't want them to be contaminated. So I'm just going to twist the dirty needle off and put the clean needle on. Um, I also want to look at the fluid bag and make sure I know where I need to give fluids to ahead of time so that I don't have to worry about um, mid-treatment, where I need to stop, and where I started. So right now we're going to go to where he did, again, the first treatment on this puppy. And so today we're going to go to this three right here. And Let's pause for a second and look at how she did the math to determine how much fluids to give per treatment. Your treatment sheet will tell you the milliliters to give for each treatment. That dose is the amount of the electrolyte fluids you're going to give to your puppy for each treatment and you're going to give a treatment twice a day. Each time you give a treatment, you'll have to do a little quick math to determine where on the bag you're going to stop for each treatment. So in this video, the fluid bag starts at the 150 milliliter mark. That's where the top of the fluids are. The dose written on the treatment form you can see says to give 150 milliliters subcutaneously or under the skin for each treatment. Since each little blue line on the bag is worth 50 milliliters, if we're starting at the 150 mark and we need to give a total of 150 for this treatment, we're going to need to go down 3 marks from the 150 line down to the 300 milliliter mark. So before we start giving the fluids, we quickly do that math to determine where the fluids need to be at the end of the treatment to make sure we're giving the correct amount of fluids with each treatment. If the fluids were starting at the 3 and I was giving 150 milliliters, I would go down to the 450 milliliter mark. So I'm going to be looking at the, my fluid flow um, and stop when we get to this 3 line right here. Okay, I also have my medications out right here. You can kind of see them. Um, they, I took out one dose from everything that we're going to do today, and I just set it on top of the baggie so I know which medications I'm giving. Um, and I kind of have them in order as well so that I can just reach for them as I need them. This first one is going to be the Polyflex, which is um, the white antibiotic. You can see it's kind of separated here. Um, so what I want to do, I want to mix that. Um, and I'm going to do that by just pulling back on the syringe and you can see it, you might be able to see that, it kind of starts to mix again um, so that it's not separated. If you give it separated, that's okay, um, but it'll flow through the needle a little bit easier if it's mixed well. Okay, and then we are ready to start. So the first thing I'm going to do, this needle is going to be the only needle that's going to go into the puppy. And then the rest of the medications I'm going to put through this port right here. Um, so the main fluid needle goes into the puppy, and then the medications get injected through this port. So we're only poking the puppy once during the treatment. Okay, so when we put the needle into the puppy, we don't want to angle it down. Um, what we want to do is angle it, um, the needle towards their butt. Um, so we're going to go this direction, oops, move it so you can see a little bit, but we're going to go, <laughs> our patient is uh, very anxious, but we're going to go this direction, and I'm going to go at about a 45 degree angle just under the skin. I'm not going to poke down, I'm not going to poke to the side, um, I'm going to angle it towards the back, and at about a 45 degree angle. I have my friend help here. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to uncap the needle. And then I'm going to pick up the skin right here and make what's called a little skin tent. You can see I'm just going to pick it up away from the puppy. Puppies have all this extra skin, so do adult dogs. 
um, so we can lift it and then it forms a little pocket right here that I'm going to put my needle into. So I'm going to do that and I'm just going to poke once and you can see I'm pretty parallel to our patient here. And then I'm going to open the fluids and hold the puppy as still as possible. It's okay if they wiggle a little. And actually, the more they wiggle, the better because that means that they're feeling okay. Okay, so we have our first medication. I'm going to give the white polyflex, um, and I'm going to put that into the port. Again, that doesn't have to be slow at all. We can just put it directly in. And I'm going to take it out and set it aside. And you'll see some of that white fluid in the fluid line, and that is okay. It's going to flow through with the fluids, and then you won't see it again. The next medication I'm going to give is the Reglin, which is the anti-nausea, anti-vomiting medication. And then, so this is the Reglin. Uh, we're going to inject this into the IV line as well. We're done with that medication. And then, so the last two medications that we have are the Batril and the Serenia. Um, the Serenia I'm going to give last because it does sting a little bit. Um, and so when we give that, we're, we're pretty close to done, so we don't have to um, have our puppy sit still for too much longer. You'll notice as you give the fluids, there, there's going to be a bubble under the skin of the fluids that have come into the puppy. That is okay. Depending on how much fluid your puppy has been prescribed, that will tell you uh, or dictate how big that bubble gets. Um, and then that bubble that forms right here from the fluids will go down over time as you ab uh, absorb the fluids. Or you might also notice that they start to fall to the side or even end up kind of in this area. And that's just gravity pulling them down. It's totally normal, um, but they should absorb um, usually over the course of a few hours or so. More dehydrated puppies will absorb the fluids quicker. Um, so if your puppy is dehydrated, you might notice that bubble get absorbed faster than if your puppy is uh, more adequately hydrated. Okay, so we are now um, almost done with our fluid amount that we are uh, giving. And so I'm going to go ahead and give the Batril medication. I'm going to put this into the port, into my nice big pocket of fluids. Done with that one. We'll give it just a second to get through the IV line. And then our last one, I'm going to look at how much fluids I have left to give. Um, we are just about there. So I'm going to go ahead and give my Serenia, and then we, are be, we will be done with this treatment. I'm going to give that in the port. We're going to squeeze that through. Set that aside for now. I'm not going to worry about capping it right now just because I have my puppy, and I want my puppy to finish getting these treatments. So I'm going to make sure I'm not going to poke myself for nobody else's and just put it aside for a little bit. Okay, and we are done. So I'm going to close this clamp and then pull the needle out of the puppy. And then you might notice a little bit of fluid leaking out of where we poked the puppy. That is totally okay. You can see it even looks a little bit wet back here. That again is totally normal and okay. Um, you don't need to worry about the medication coming out. Um, it's, it's just a, it's a normal thing that might happen, um, so you don't need to worry about that. And then now our puppy is done with this treatment, and we will, um, the next treatment, we will give the, uh, only the twice a day medications. We don't need to give all four, so make sure you're paying attention to the once a day meds and the twice a day medications. That we